is low vision. Low vision is reduced vision and or visual field loss that cannot be corrected by conventional eyeglasses, contact lenses, medical treatment, or surgical procedures. In terms of visual acuity, low vision usually means a person's best attainable eyesight is 2070 or worse. This means that a person with 2070 acuity needs to be at a distance of 20 feet to see an object when a person with normal 2020 acuity can see the same object at 70 feet. In terms of visual field, low vision usually means a person's total horizontal visual field is restricted to 40 degrees or less, when a normal visual field is 180 degrees or more. Many people with low vision are legally blind. For income tax purposes in the United States, Legal blindness is defined as best corrected visual acuity worse than 20, 125, or total visual field constriction of 20 degrees or less. What causes low vision? The most significant cause of low vision is age-related macular degeneration. Other causes may include cataracts, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy. Though low vision is most frequently associated with degenerative conditions occurring later in life, it can also be caused by congenital eye diseases or diseases occurring earlier in life, such as congenital cataracts, optic nerve disease, or retinitis pigmentosa. How common is low vision? One out of every six adults over the age of 45 has low vision. For those aged 75 and older, the number increases to one out of every four persons. How does a low vision evaluation differ from a regular eye exam? First we begin with a very comprehensive questionnaire. After reviewing your ocular history, we want to know how your visual impairment affects your daily life, such as reading, writing checks, cooking, seeing appliance controls, and watching television. We are also interested in how your visual impairment affects your ability to travel safely. Can you see curves and steps? And are you glare sensitive? Equally as important, we want to know how you are coping with your vision loss. Now we begin the evaluation. You will notice that we use a different eye chart. The low vision eye chart is capable of measuring a more accurate visual acuity than just 2400 or 2200. With these additional lines, we're able to measure 2320 or 2250 and so on. Because of this low vision chart, optometrists specialized in low vision are able to perform a refraction that is more accurate. We are also able to determine when a glasses prescription will be more useful to you or whether or not glasses are needed at all. To enable us to determine an accurate prescription, we do not use a normal foropter. Instead, we use a trial frame that sits directly on your face. With this technique, we are able to offer much larger power differences for you to make a determination between which lens is best for you. We are also able to assure that the frame and lenses will fit just as they should when they are prescribed. Now a very important component of visual function that is not assessed during a normal eye exam is contrast sensitivity. Contrast impacts day-to-day -day activities such as seeing people's faces, determining depth perception such as seeing curves or steps, or reading low contrast print such as newspaper or print on colored background. To measure contrast sensitivity, we use a low contrast chart. This helps us with recommendations for special lighting and electronic magnifiers, as well as the use of high contrast in your own environment to improve visual function. Once we've determined whether a spectacle prescription is helpful and what your contrast sensitivity is, we can proceed to the evaluation of low vision aids. Distance low vision devices include monocular telescopes for independent travel. These are used to spot street signs, bus numbers, and signals. 
They can also be used for menu boards in restaurants and viewing artifacts in museums. Binocular telescopic glasses are useful for distance viewing when a person is unable to sit physically close to the performance. For television, the best viewing is obtained simply by sitting close to the television monitor and increasing the contrast, tint, and color of the TV. Additional telescopic devices include bioptic glasses for driving. These are only considered for those who are not legally blind and who have stable vision. For near tasks such as reading, writing, and computer, we have various categories of magnifying aids. We have high-powered reading glasses, which require you to hold material close to your face. Additional lighting always helps to improve contrast of reading material. Using a closed lampshade with an adjustable gooseneck is particularly helpful in directing the light to the needed task. No more than a 60-watt bulb is needed to provide enough illumination. The closer the light is to the page, the brighter the illumination. It is also important to place the light below the eye level and direct it away from the face to avoid glare into the eyes. When using a magnifier with the light, the light must be placed below the magnifying lens to avoid glare off of the surface of the lens. We have handheld magnifiers which can provide illumination and still be portable for price tags or menus. We also have stand magnifiers which stand on the page and allow for longer reading of text. It should be noted that with stronger magnification powers, the size of the magnifying lens will be smaller as well as the field of view through the lens. The newest category of magnifying aids is the video magnifiers. These magnify to a much higher power and are able to convert text to high contrast or reverse contrast for those who are glare sensitive. For the computer, it is important to be focused for the distance of the monitor and to consider internal enlargement capabilities as well as large print software. A large print keyboard or zoom caps for the keyboard are also helpful. Once we have assessed which low vision aids are best for you, we go outdoors to demonstrate various tints to determine what will improve contrast for curves and steps and to reduce glare. As you have seen, the low vision evaluation provides you with the tools to maximize your visual function. And should your vision change and in consultation with your ophthalmologist, you may benefit from a reevaluation of your low vision. In addition to the low vision evaluation, there are other services that someone with low vision can benefit from. Vista Center also offers support groups and classes, instruction in daily living skills such as cooking and medication self-management, as well as orientation and mobility lessons to assist with safe travel. With all of our services, we hope to help you maintain your independence and live life to the fullest. If you know someone with a visual impairment who is interested in learning more about a low vision evaluation, please have them contact Vista Center in Palo Alto at 650-858-0202 or in Santa Cruz at 831-458-9766. You can also visit us on the web at www.vistacenter.org. This video was produced with the help of a grant provided by Cisco Systems Incorporated.